Hi everyone, this video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 6.2.2.4 Configuring Basic EIGRP with IP version 4. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Cisco RNS Scaling Networks version 6 curriculum. Now, in this lab assignment we're going to go through how to configure the dynamic routing protocol EIGRP. Now, with static routing, we remember we had to enter in our, like let's say on R1 right here. If it's not directly connected, R1 does not know how to get to it. So even this network here at R2, the 172.16.2.0 network up here, R1 doesn't know how to get there because it's not directly connected. So with static routing, we could go into R1, do an IP route, put in our destination network up here of 172.16.2.0, its subnet mask, and then we could either put like what interface do you leave out of to go there um, you know or we could put what IP address do you want me to send it to and then R2's IP address would be it and then hopefully R2 would know how to get there which it does and it would work however with IP, with static routing if something goes down it's very cumbersome about managing how many routes you've got in there plus you've got to do that for every destination literally every destination um, so with dynamic routing, what we do is on R1, we're going to enter in all of our directly connected networks that we know about, and it's going to share that with the other routers that are participating in EIGRP with the same autonomous system number. So for R1, the first thing we want to do here is go in, do config T, and we're going to enter router EIGRP. One. Now, if you do router and do a question mark, you'll see the other routing protocols that we could use. RIP is another distance vector, but RIP only uses hop count. So that kind of, that's not the best thing because it does not literally take into account uh, link speed or bandwidth at all. So it could be dial up and if it's one hop away, even though something else may be two hops away, but it's a gig per second, it's going to choose the dial up because it's only one hop away. Plus, RIP is only good for small networks. If it's more than 16 hops away, um, basically more than 15 hops away, that 16th hop, it basically renders your network unreachable. Uh, with EIGRP, you can be like 256 hops away, I believe, or 255 hops. So EIGRP uses that dual algorithm, remember, um, to basically make its final path choices. OSPF is a link state protocol that we will go over in the next chapter uh, for um, single area OSPF and then we'll do multi area OSPF. So again, here we're doing EIGRP, router EIGRP 1. We hit enter. Okay, now we see our, our prompt change to config dash router. So we're going to enter in all of our directly connected networks. Now, these are listed in slash notation, so it's important to know how these correspond to actual subnet mask and then how do you convert those subnet masks to what we call a wildcard mask okay so let me open up notepad really quickly all right so this is great to have our network diagrammed out for us this makes it really easy so we've got network 172.16.1.0 so that's what we're going to type in here first network 172.16.1.0 okay but then if we do a question mark, you can see it tells us we want our wildcard mask. What is a wildcard mask? All right. So if you've got this here and our subnet mask, it says is a slash 24. We know a slash 24 should correspond to 255.255.255.0. Okay. If you don't remember that, then make sure you print off a subnetting chart or go back and remember your subnetting. Okay. That also, that subnet mask tells us how big our network can be. To a slash 24 basically means you have 256 addresses, can't use the first and last, the broadcast, and the, or the network and the broadcast, so you end up with 254 usable hosts. That can be typical for a local area network. But this is the subnet mask. What is our wildcard mask? Well, our wildcard mask, basically, if you take your subnet mask, okay, which is right here, I'm going to put all 255 is above this, okay? And then you're basically subtracting this from this, okay? So what we have here essentially 
All right, if I do the math correctly, 255 minus 255 is zero, okay? I'll put my dot here to separate it. 255 minus 255 is zero. And here, let's do it this way, okay? Zero again. Okay, then I've got 255 minus 255 is zero and 255 minus zero is 255. So I end up with a wildcard mask, if you rewrite it nicely, with 0.0.0.255, .0 .0 .0 okay? So that's what I wanna put in here, 0.0.0.255, okay? That is my wildcard mask for that network, all right? Next, I do network, and I'm gonna do my next directly connected one. It doesn't matter which one you choose first. Let's do the 172.16.3.0. Okay, now I need my wildcard mask again though. So let's redo this. So my, my subnet mask this time in slash notation is a slash 30. Okay, that corresponds to a 255.255.255.252. Okay, this is just here by default. Okay, now I'm going to subtract again. So I end up with zero dot zero dot zero dot three okay two five five minus two five two is three so this is my wildcard mass zero dot zero dot zero dot three so here I'm going to do zero dot zero dot zero dot three okay now I do my next network network one nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot four Now, this one's also a slash 30, so I can assume that that's going to be the same wildcard, 0.0.0.3, because a slash 30 is 255.255.252, no matter how many times you, you know, rewrite it, it's the exact same, okay? Now, that configures my network sharing. AR1 is going to send that out. Now, when we think about the routers telling the network what to do, like where to send the packets and everything. We want to share these with R2 and R3. We do not want to share this to this LAN, okay? Big, big red X, that would waste bandwidth. Why would I be sending routing updates to a, uh, a switch or a PC? We don't need to, we only need to send it to other routers that are participating. So what I want to do here is set a passive interface, and that's what the next direction is telling you to do, of G00, the interface name, and that's the LAN interface there that it's connected to. So I do not want to send out routing updates to my LAN interface, okay? The next thing we want to do is disable auto summary. So we type no auto dash summary, okay? What no auto summary does is when we do a show IP route eventually to see how we learned about the other routes and destinations that we know how to get to from the other routers, if like, for instance, these two are very closely related, 172.16.1.0, this one's 172.16.3.0, it's gonna try to lump all of that together under one summary route. And sometimes it can be hard to decipher just how many routes you know about. So instead we do no auto summary. So it doesn't summarize them all together. It shows us individually how to get to each network and it doesn't do all the summarization stuff, okay? Now, Let's save our routing configuration. So I'm gonna do a copy, run, start. Okay, and I'm gonna go over to R2. Now this time I'm going to do the same thing, router, EIGRP1. Okay, and I'm going to um, type in my directly connected networks. So for here on R2, I'm gonna do 172, so network 172.16.2.0, okay, that's up here at the top. Again, that's a slash 24 address. So remember before, that's 255.255.255.0 or a wildcard mask of 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.255, okay? Our next network is 172.16.3.0 and its subnet mask is a slash 30 which is a .252 or wildcard 0.0.0.3.
right, now, I know that that seems like it's overlapping with R1, but remember, we want to form these adjacencies. As soon as I entered that in there, you saw it form an adjacency saying, hey, we know about that same network, okay? Next, we're going to do network one set, oh, sorry, 192.168.10.8. That's the one that R2 shares with R3 right here, okay? And 0.0.0.3 because it's a slash 30. So the wildcard mask would be 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.3, okay? Now, it happens to have the same LAN interface name, so we'll do passive-interface G00 so that it doesn't send any routing updates out to PC2, okay? And I'm going to do a do copy run start, okay? Lastly, we're going to go to R3 here. I'm going to do the same things. Enable config T router EIGRP1 network, and we're going to enter in the three directly connected networks. I'm going to start with the LAN here, the R3 LAN. So 192.168.1.0.0.0.255. So you see how we kind of once we have one wildcard mask, we can kind of you know reuse that because slash 24 is a slash 24. It doesn't change. Uh, network. 192.168.10.4, that's the network that R3 and R1 share, and it's a slash 30, so 0 .0 0.0.0.3. And you start to see it form an adjacency there. And then lastly, network 192.168.10.8, 0 .0 0.0.0.3, that's the network that R3 and R2 share. Hit enter, and we see it form another adjacency there. Then I'm gonna do a do, copy, run, start, to save my changes. And sorry, I almost forgot, we didn't do the passive interface. So let me go back into router EIGRP1, and we'll have to still do the passive interface G00, because we don't want R3 to waste bandwidth sending updates to PC3. Now again, remember that that interface name can change depending on what your interface goal is, like which interface do you not want to send routing updates out of. Okay, so then we redo the do copy run start. All right, and if we look that gives us 80 out of 80. Okay, now again, you can do a show IP route. Oops, sorry, not up route, IP route. And we can see here, based off of our legend up here at the top, okay, anything that's C is directly connected. We automatically know about those, right? But now we have learned about some stuff, and if we look for EIGRP, it's a D. So anytime you see a D, it learned about 172.16.2.0, which is this LAN up here with R2, okay? It learned about that via EIGRP, okay? And it tells you how to get there. So it has learned dynamically about all of these networks. And if you do that on each router, you'll see the same thing, okay? You'll see how it learned about other networks. And of course, the directly connected ones will change. Um, but again, same concept, all right? So that completes EIGRP with IP version four. Uh, be sure to look at the next um, packet tracer assignment with IP version six, as IP version six is definitely becoming uh, more prominent in the networking field as IP version 4, especially in the American Registry uh, of Internet Numbers, is already depleted. So again, make sure to look at that one as well.